Hello and welcome. Today we're talking how to document family stories. This might be the best way in four key steps. The show is brought to you by the Your Family Story system, which is everything you need to know to document the life story of a loved one. I have a Black Friday holiday special on this coming up, plus some free sections to the Your Family Stories. So stay with me. Big welcome if you're new to the show. Forever Young Autobiographies is where we learn how to write life stories for family and friends so that unique memories can live on. And I'd be really happy if you could follow, subscribe and like the show and share it with a friend. One of the main questions I get asked is how to document family stories. And the answer is there's lots of different ways. But I've been a journalist for a couple of decades and I've interviewed many, many people about their stories. And I've come up with this key way, which I think is really fun, it's rewarding and it's repeatable. And this is the foundation for the Your Family Story system. And these four key steps are great to do at, during holidays like now or any time of the year when you're writing an autobiography, a memoir, a biography or another life story project. So to kick off these four steps, we have some planning. We need to do some planning to make sure this all goes smoothly. And specifically you, if you're doing, you're leading this project as the interviewer, you need to think about why. Why is this so important? Why do you want to do that? Because this is going to give you great motivation if you've got that sorted from the outset. Second, you need to talk to the person, your loved one, who you're going to interview, the interviewee. Make sure you get their support. Of course, we need to do that. Be prepared. When you initially ask, some people may be a little bit hesitant. There might be some initial resistance to this idea. They, they could be caught off guard, they feel flattered, but they're a bit nervous. So just persistently ask again respectfully. And then once you can, lock in a time and a place for an interview. Step two is actually getting organised for the interview. You have to do a tad little bit of homework for this one. It's not too hard. But as the interviewer, you should be getting in, clear in your mind exactly what type of interview you're hoping to hold. Is this going to be an overview of somebody's life or are you going to hone in on a specific time? Get that clear and then develop some questions. Not a whole heap, but just some questions to get the ball rolling. Also, ready your tools that you might need, such as obviously a pen, a notebook, and any kind of audio or visual recording device. Get that sorted. That's your homework. Now your interviewee has to do a little bit of work too to make sure that this is really successful. Get them to think about memories that they want to talk about, key memories especially. Get those bobbling to the surface and the guiding message or anything that they specifically want to cover in their interview. It's good to get this organised before sitting down. Which leads me to step three, which is holding an interview. The key thing to do here is to get comfy before you launch into it. Get comfy, have everything there that you need. So you've got your questions, you've got your recording device and any photos or documents that you might need. So how to hold a great interview. I'm sure it's going to go fine and I could talk about holding in, how to hold an interview all day. But if you just take away today, the key thing is not to ask too many questions all at once. So you're just going to ask one question, let them reply, and then another. Don't go asking these double barrel questions. You want to get a nice flow to your interview. Also keep in mind that you're really going to be listening, being respectful. That's your role, okay? You're trying to get the information from your loved one, from your interviewee. Be prepared that you may encounter difficult or some painful topics. Just be prepared for that. 
and also know that life stories or family stories is not really the place for any revenge style attacks or anything defamatory. I'm not a lawyer, but look, I think we can just skip over that. We're not here for that. Keep that in mind when you're holding your interview. And that brings me to the last step of the process, which is organizing and presenting this material. So once you've finished your interview or you've, maybe you've done a couple of interviews, you've got a heap of information. What do you do with that? A lot of people will transcribe it, but you need to gather it all together. So get your recordings, your notes, any photos, any documents you might want to use, and then decide on a format. How are you going to present this? What are you going to do with it? And in this technological age that we're living in, there's so many different ways. Uh, you could do, start out simply. We could do a life story feature article, which is just a short version. Also, there's a photo book, a scrapbook with photos and captions. That's a good idea to begin with. Otherwise, you can go to a book. I've even seen people do complete websites. So amazing options that you can choose from. Don't get overwhelmed though, just pick one, however simple, whatever it takes your fancy, pick one and make sure you see it through to completion. Because it's only once we finish something can we then share it and celebrate someone's life. So that's the four steps, that's pretty much everything you need to know about recording your family stories or family history. To recap those four steps, we had, we need to do a little bit of planning, then we need to get organized for an interview, hold an interview, compile all the information and present it. They're the four key things you need to do. My hope is that by doing all of this, by knowing all this information, you won't have that hesitation to record family stories. You're going to jump in there with confidence and have fun recording these precious family stories. And they are, they're really precious, they're priceless. This is just the tip of the iceberg of what I've got a full article on this topic over at my website. And you can see that at Forever Young Autobiographies com slash how to document family stories. Please head over there and let me know. Leave me a comment right now over at the website. Leave me a comment. Who are you going to interview? Whose family stories are you going to tackle? Who's interesting you? Let us know. And you can drop me a message at foreveryoungautobiographies.com slash contact or email, email me at info at foreveryoungautobiographies.com. I mentioned there was a Black Friday special, a holiday special happening for the Your Family Story system, which is where I expand in depth on these four steps. So you have a heap more information and I've got 50% off the Your Family Story system at the moment. Plus you get a free coaching call with me to help you through the process or if you're getting stuck with anything or you have any questions or doubts, then you can get on a call with me and we can get you through, get you to record these family stories. And then to get this deal, all you need to go is do is go to foreveryoungautobiographies.com slash deal. Follow the instructions there and you'll get 50% off and you'll be able to book a coaching call with me. If you'd like to take a look at some free sections to the Your Family Story system, you can do that as well. If you're just on the fence a little bit, you want to take a look, that's fine. Go to foreveryoungautobiographies.com slash free. Pop in your email, hit enter, and I'll send it to you. So that's pretty much for all from me today. Um, really happy, again, if you could follow, subscribe, and like the show because I'll be back again really soon with another topic. And until then, happy writing.